Have you ever considered the true power of nature? The force that can shape landscapes, alter coastlines, and devastate entire cities in mere moments? We live in a world where the ground beneath our feet, so solid and dependable, can at times reveal an unpredictable and raw power that leaves us in awe and often in devastation. This is particularly true for the country of Chile, a land sculpted by the relentless forces of geology. Positioned above the convergent boundary where the Nazca Plate and the South American Plate clash at an astonishing rate of 66 millimeters per year, Chile is no stranger to the Earth's most potent seismic activities. This volatile setting has been the stage for some of history's most significant megathrust earthquakes, including the largest one ever recorded. Today, we delve into the story of the 1835 Conception earthquake, a catastrophic event that shook Chile to its core. On February 20th, 1835, at 11.30 local time, life in the cities of Concepcion and Talcahuano was about to change dramatically. Imagine the scene, a bustling marketplace full of vendors selling their fresh produce, children playing in the streets, their laughter echoing through the air, the blacksmith's hammer hitting the anvil, shaping the metal with each strike, the aroma of freshly baked bread wafting from the baker's oven, the hum of conversation as friends, neighbors, and strangers interact, conducting their daily business. Life was unfolding in its usual rhythm, a symphony of sounds, scents, and sights that painted a vibrant picture of these thriving Chilean cities. Then, without warning, the earth began to tremble. At first, it was just a slight tremor, a subtle shudder underfoot, but within seconds the tremor intensified into a violent shaking that rattled the buildings and stirred panic in the hearts of the people. The once familiar sounds of the city were drowned out by the terrifying roar of the earth, the crash of falling structures and the screams of the frightened populace. People rushed out of their homes and businesses, their faces etched with fear and confusion. Mothers clutched their children tightly, their protective instincts kicking in. The blacksmith dropped his hammer, the baker abandoned his oven, and the vendors left their stalls as everyone scrambled for safety. The ground under their feet, once a source of stability, had turned into a monstrous force of destruction. As the city shook violently, buildings crumbled like houses of cards. Centuries-old churches, markets, homes and schools were reduced to rubble within minutes. The Earth's wrath was indiscriminate, claiming both the humble abode and the stately mansion. Amidst the chaos and destruction, the people of Concepcion and Talcahuano could only watch in horror as their beloved cities were torn apart. In a matter of moments, the bustling cities were in the grip of one of the most powerful forces on Earth. When the ground finally stilled, the cities of Concepcion and Talcahuano were unrecognizable. The once thriving cities were reduced to rubble, with buildings and infrastructure shattered by the sheer force of nature. From the bustling metropolis of San Fernando in the north to the serene town of Osorno in the south, destruction was everywhere. The tremors were felt as far north as Copiapo, as far south as the island of Chiloe, and as far west as the Juan Fernandez Islands. A survey later revealed the extent of the devastation. In Conception, 33% of kiln-dried brick buildings, 71% of mud brick structures, and a staggering 95% of stone-built constructions lay in ruins. The rest were significantly damaged, barely standing amidst the rubble. Yet, despite the immense destruction, the death toll was relatively low. Only 50 lives were lost in the calamity. This was attributed to the gradual increase in the intensity of shaking, which gave the inhabitants enough warning to escape to safety. The fact that the earthquake struck in the middle of the day also played a crucial role, providing people with the visibility and awareness to move away from structures likely to collapse. The town of Talcahuano bore the brunt of the earthquake's wrath. The destruction was greater still due to the effects of the tsunami that followed, Buildings were flattened, leaving only the lower parts standing. A schooner was swept about 200 meters inland, coming to rest in the middle of the ruined town. Yet, here too, the death toll was surprisingly low. The inhabitants had time to run up the hills behind the town, escaping the wrath of the waves. The 1835 Conception earthquake 
was a stark reminder of the destructive power of nature, leaving two cities in ruins and thousands displaced. Yet it also highlighted the resilience of the human spirit, with a surprisingly low death toll amidst such widespread devastation. But the ordeal was not yet over for the people of Concepcion and Talcahuano. The process of rebuilding their lives and their cities was just beginning. As if the earthquake was not devastating enough, an even more fearsome spectacle was about to unfold. The sea, once a source of livelihood and a symbol of tranquility, was now to become the harbinger of destruction. The earthquake had triggered a tsunami, a monstrous wave that was now hurtling towards the city of Talcahuano. The ground had barely stopped shaking when the first signs of the impending disaster began to appear. The sea receded, revealing the seabed as if the ocean was taking a deep breath before unleashing its fury. When the tsunami arrived, it did so with a force that dwarfed the already catastrophic earthquake. The wave, a wall of water, swept through the city, sweeping aside everything in its path. Buildings that had withstood the earthquake crumbled under the might of the wave, the rushing water leaving no stone unturned. One of the most striking sights was a schooner, a once majestic sailing vessel, now a plaything in the hands of the tsunami. It was swept about 200 meters inland, deposited in the middle of the ruined town as if it were a child's toy left carelessly on a playground. The people of Talcahuano, still reeling from the earthquake, were now faced with a new and even more terrifying ordeal. As the wave approached, they ran. They ran for the hills, their only hope of escape from the relentless onslaught of the water. The townsfolk who had minutes before been picking through the debris of their shattered city were now in a race against nature, a race for their very lives. But the tsunami was merciless. It tore through the city, leaving only the lower parts of some buildings standing, a grim reminder of what once was. The city was devastated, its people left to pick up the pieces of their shattered lives. The tsunami left a scene of utter devastation in its wake, a stark testament to the relentless power of nature. In the aftermath of the earthquake and tsunami, the people of Concepcion and Talcahuano faced the daunting task of rebuilding their cities and their lives. The destruction was vast, the loss immense, but the human spirit, steadfast and resilient, emerged from the rubble. Amid the ruins, the survivors began the arduous journey of rebuilding. Brick by brick, stone by stone, they reconstructed their homes, their streets, their lives. Kiln-dried brick buildings, mud-brick buildings, stone-built constructions, all rose again from the ashes, a testament to the indomitable will of the people. The process was painstaking, slow, yet every rebuilt structure, every re-established community was a triumph. A victory against the unfathomable power of nature that had, in a moment, brought their world crashing down. At the same time, the people of Concepcion and Talcahuano began to understand the need for better preparation. They learned that the earth beneath their feet was not as solid as it seemed, that the sea that caressed their shores could turn into a monstrous wave. This understanding led to a transformation in their approach to earthquake preparedness. Buildings were constructed to withstand the tremors, evacuation plans were developed, and people were educated about the signs of an impending earthquake or tsunami. The memories of the 1835 earthquake have not faded. They linger in the heart of the cities, a silent reminder of a day when the earth shook and the sea roared. These memories have shaped the cities, molded their people, and influenced their approach to disaster management. Today, Concepcion and Talcahuano stand proud and strong, their skyline a tribute to their resilience and their ability to rise from the ruins. The cities bear the scars of their past, but they are not defined by them. Instead, they are defined by their determination to rebuild, to learn and to forge ahead. The 1835 Conception earthquake serves as a poignant reminder of the power of nature a force that can shape and reshape our world in an instant. The events of February 20th, 1835 have left an indelible mark on the history of Chile. This day serves as a stark reminder of the formidable power of nature, a power that can alter landscapes and lives in a matter of moments. The Conception earthquake, with its estimated magnitude of 8.5, triggered a devastating tsunami, painting a grim picture of destruction from San Fernando in the north to Osorno in the south. 
The cities of Concepcion and Talcahuano bore the brunt of this catastrophe. Their structures reduced to rubble and their people left to pick up the pieces. Yet in the face of such adversity, the resilience of the Chilean people shone through. Despite the extensive damage, the death toll remained relatively low, a testament to the quick thinking and resourcefulness of the inhabitants. As we remember the 1835 Concepcion earthquake, we are reminded of our vulnerability in the face of nature's power and our capacity to rebuild and persevere in the aftermath of disaster. <laughs>